Hi there, I'm Pete Scargill. This is the 6th of March 2017 and I'm going to tell you something about Big Timer, including some new updates to Big Timer. But I'm not going to make assumptions about your knowledge of Big Timer. I will assume that you know what Node Red is. Very briefly, it's a visual programming environment that is free and quite frankly, absolutely excellent. In this case, that visual environment is sitting on a Raspberry Pi and is being used to control all sorts of things around the house. So on the left, you are looking at a browser window of the editing environment. On the right, you're looking at a close approximation to my mobile phone. Um, uh, just in, again, in a browser, just for convenience, so that I can show you the two together. So the timer itself, uh, which is freely available, um, is can be used just as a simple replacement for a me mechanical timer. You can set an on time and an off time, and you can set on uh, output message, off output message, and send that off out of this first output to, if you like, MQTT or something else to control something. And that will just sit there 24 hours a day and control lighting and, and whatever else. That's the simplest use. Another way of using the timer is in conjunction with Node-RED dashboard, and that's a setup that we've got here. I have three button inputs on the left, on, off, and auto, and you will see the three buttons on my shed green lighting there, on, off, and auto. Um, I'll explain the other inputs uh, later, but this is basically injecting text into the input to override its default actions. Uh, so picture is worth a thousand words. On the right hand side, I'll show you this in action. Shed green lights on. You might have heard a click there. And there's a little indicator under the timer that says on temporary override. Off. Now off temporary override. Note the change of color. And back to auto. And because I didn't set any of the days that this timer runs, which I'll show you in a minute, there's no action today. So I'll double click on the timer. Uh, it has a name, which you can make whatever you like. You can set an on time and an off time. And in the drop down boxes, you can set things like sunrise, sunset, dawn and dusk, etc. The reason you can do that is because the timer is aware of your longitude and latitude that will normally be filled in by the browser. But if not, you may have to fill it in manually and you can easily get that from uh, Google Maps the command line on Google Maps, if you point it to your house or office, will show you your longitude and latitude. Uh, I have on and off offset uh, in minutes. Uh, you'll notice that the timer goes up 15 minutes at a time. So if you want to make a, a particular time, you can do that with on and off offset. They are also affected by a button further down the screen out of view, which is a randomized button, which lets you do, you know, slight variations on on and off times uh, in a kind of um, burglar discouraging scenario. Um, so assuming that you're going to control something, typically you might have a message topic which goes out of the output, and then two messages, one when whatever it is is turning on, and another message when something's turning off. These look odd, but they're, they're, they're my uh, MQTT messages to, to my controllers. Might be very different in your case. There is a third output out of this unit, and that can be used, you can fire that off to a speech system if you like, and so we have on text and off text, which might be spoken out, or it might be put on a display, or whatever you want to do with it. As I mentioned earlier, you do have manual override, and there is a default timeout on that of 24 hours. Uh, you can set it in, in minutes. You can set it to whatever you want, really. The timer can be set to uh, as many or as few days of the week as you want, and as many or as few months of the year as you want. And you've also got the ability to do special days, like let's let's have the timer on on Christmas Day, um, or whatever. You've got f like five of each of those uh, special weekdays of the month and days of the year. In addition to that, you can suspend the schedule if you want. You can click to randomize the outputs, which I explained earlier. 
the uh, that output only changes when the state changes. So when the light goes on, there's an output. When the light goes off, there's an output. You can have that repeat every minute if you want. If you have a scenario where it's possible that your devices at the other end could forget what state they're supposed to be in, you could use that to ensure that the state's reinforced every minute. And whether or not there is an output uh, right at the beginning when you start the node up, you can select that as well. Uh, right, so so that's that's that. So without any inputs, you have a simple timer. In this case, I'm using Node Red dashboard, and I've got on, off, and auto buttons, which you can see on the right. And part one of the many messages you can get out of that middle. Um, output there, uh, which in fact is message.state, uh, can be sent, uh, copied over to message payload and sent out to a text box, which you'll see on the right in our little pretend phone here. So as you see, when I turn the lights on, that says on manual, off manual. You can hear the click there as it's going on and off and back to auto. So that's another sort of slightly more extended use of the timer. I have had a few people say to me, but can you control the on-off times of the timer from the dashboard? That was never intended to be the way the timer would work, but I've had a few requests for this, so I've added that in. Now, bear in mind that any changes you make uh, via the dashboard will be lost uh, if you turn Node Red off and then back on again, or turn your control device uh, off and then back on again. So it's not permanent. Um, so at power up of the controller, you may want to inject anything. Um, I think one guy wanted to bring some stuff out of a database into the timer, so you can do that. And bear in mind, you can have as many of these timers as you want. So the, the actual text to override those default times uh, are on override and off override uh, in hours and minutes. So this, this button here will inject the text on underscore override space eight space 15, which is 8.15 in the morning. Uh, you can just put one figure in minutes if you like. If you don't put any figure at all, uh, the override is turned off, okay? So I'll give you an example, you got no action today. If I click on override, in a minute, that no action today will change. Now, why why does it take so long? Because the timer to keep the resources down only checks itself once every minute. It's not checking every second. It's just checking uh, every minute to see if it needs to turn on or turn off, etc. Let's have a look at what these outputs are and what they do. And the simple way that we do that is to stick a debug node under there in case you don't know the debug node outputs message payload to this debug window. Uh, in fact, I want to see the whole message because there's lots of stuff in there that you might find useful. So if we put that on the uh, main output and deploy and turn the lights on, you'll see an output here. Now this is a modern version of Node Red dashboard, so you don't see the whole object until you click on those three little dots there. So let's just have a look at the three dots. So the output comprises payload, which is in my case out 12.1. And if you if you're using this simply, you can just forget about the other outputs. You can you can forget about these other parts of the object. But if you want to use them, you can see what the topic is, the actual state on or off. You can have that as a value. Whether this is happening automatically or manually, well here it says auto state, it was not because manual state is on. Uh, there's our timeout and we're in temporary manual state. Right, so the, lots of things you can have there but you can just totally ignore them if you're not interested. I'm gonna show you the middle output which has a little bit more. This middle output, remember, is updated every minute. And there it goes. Let's have a look at this uh, object. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, let's turn the output off. We have a payload, which is one or not. Um, um, we have the state, which is off manual. 
Notice on the right on my little pretend phone, it says off manual. That's where it's getting that from. Um, all sorts of other information, including current, dusk and dawn, etc. These are, for example, dawn, are available as message.dawn. And if you need them to be in payload, where you just say message.payload equals message.dawn. It's as simple as that. So lots of uh, stuff there which you may find useful or may not. That's entirely up to you whether you use them or not. I'm just going to put that light onto auto again. And there we see it. No action today. And off. And basically that is... Um, that's big timer. So you've got manual on, uh, manual off. You've got automatic operation. Uh, you can stop the timer running. Uh, you can override uh, the on off times. So a simple timer or a complex timer as you choose. Uh, more information in the info tab for the timer. If we click on the timer and click on its info tab, there's lots of information there. Uh, about it and also um, uh, you can uh, click to go to the relevant web page uh, which is scargill.net slash big timer and there you'll find uh, there you go March 6th pretty much up-to-date information about what you can do with big timer and lots of comments from people I believe this one has well over 200 there you go 200 and odd comments at this point so lots of interest, useful timer, there you go.